And we are recording. First of all, thank you to everyone who is watching this part of the Dark and Terrible campaign. If you haven't seen the other parts, please check out the playlist in the description. In the previous part, Esben and Killian were following these vague instructions given to them by Lothian about a lockbox or strongbox hidden somewhere in Compton or Old Compton, specifically at the very edge of a hole near the top of Lothian's tower. And some were in the ruins of Old Compton, but those they didn't obtain more information besides that. Now, before we begin, um, Josh, what are your expectations for your character? This go around, I'm very curious to get back to Compton. I think the rough skin orcs possibly may have slaughtered everyone. I don't know. We'll see when we get there, but I'm afraid that might be a scenario where we run into. But I definitely want to try to get to the tower and scour that. And if nothing comes up, even if we do find something there, I'm curious maybe to go to uh, the east and check out Old Compton as well, and see what we might be able to come across. But I think uh, both myself and Esben, I, th I think we're ready to see what's up with Squire Ken as well. So we'll see. There's a lot that can unfold. Even the fact that that mysterious voice, that's got me very unnerved. Just the fact that somebody was there and could essentially have taken us all out. But we'll see what happens. That sounds logical. Now, Crispy, what are your expectations? Well, I, I think like Josh, Josh mentioned, uh, I'd like Chris or Esben would like to know who's the puppet master behind all of this and, and how are they getting into our heads? And and I think my expectations, I, I want to lean a little more into the uh, the charming aspect of Esben. Um, I, I know that sounds a little odd because we're tracking down a you know a group of bloodthirsty orcs, but I'd like to I'd like to see if I can apply that uh, that Esben charm to avoid some bloodshed, but he's ready either way. Okay. And so it begins. You are now standing at the very place that you were suffering those effects from the blindness, but you are completely free from such effects. You are now facing southwards towards Compton and perhaps towards Old Compton that lies to the east. It has been if we could take a moment, possibly all of us, scour the area and see if there's any type of signs of who that individual may have seen, been, even if there's any footprints or any. Well, you think that they, that he was actually here in the real? Yeah. Well, I we think should, it's possible. If he was here, we should absolutely take some time and, and look Just around. Just a moment. Nico, Mateo, take a look around and see if there's been someone here recently. Um, It'll be a little challenging, I imagine, because we've we've got all these orc tracks. Also, um, we better make sure we're ready for some potential action if we're going to be following these orcs to Compton. Uh, Mateo, let's uh, let's work up some kind of shield or something that you can you can use to. I'd like you to stay close to Killian this time. I just want to make sure that he's got some extra protection. He's taken some bad blows and. Killy and I, I don't know, it makes me nervous every time you, you get hit. But we know that you're not one to take a whole lot of abuse. Yeah, these burns are definitely going to need some yeah, healing yeah. when it's all said and done. That Absolutely. That's a very intense altercation Absolutely. we had. So um, I Stand agree, Killy, and let's would. take a look around. Let's take a look around and, and see if there's any sign of anyone nearby here. Absolutely. I look off into the directions and I think I heard the voice. And Spin, Luca, if you check over there as well, we'll all just kind of scour out and see if we can find any indications of this mysterious voice. Good idea, Killian. Let's do that. As you are searching, it is quite obvious that there was someone here. It seems that the individual was slightly stealthy, but not enough. It is obvious that there are tracks, especially because of the terrain. Here in Brickshire, sometimes there are rains and the soil can be a bit tricky for someone who is trying to be stealthy. It is obvious that there was someone here and the tracks lead southwards as well. Hmm. Same Suddenly, direction. you are interrupted. You feel a strange presence. It is otherworldly. And before you, 
coming from the south, stands a man. The same man you saw fixing the roof back at, at Compton in the tavern. The one who sometimes went into a trance and blurted out some cryptic and nonsensical things. He is just staring at you with his black hair, blue eyes, just staring at you almost as if in a daze. It's good to see you again, friend. How goes the repairs? Suddenly, he starts to rock back and forth and mentions the following. Morina, Omen, Nixis, foretold gypsies. There lies the shadow of man, colored flowers and marble towers. They fade to brown, inscribed in stone, abandoned flesh and bones, lost in silence, swallowed in vastness, drowned in the depths of a meaningless past. What does all this mean? What are you telling us? He I'm suddenly cautiously walk backwards behind Espen. I'll take a couple steps forward towards him, my hand uh, surreptitiously falling to the, the hilt of my throwing knife, just in case. He suddenly blinks once, but it is quite clear that his eyes are so glassy. It seems as if he is dead. And he points downwards and he says in a different voice, they are below us, they are beneath us. And suddenly he starts to speak again. Heart of winter, long past tomorrow, sleeping under soils, deep mountain black, in the Ailand hills, monster tracks, brother giants, spring rises with the sun, children dance above their heads, autumn fades. Should they awaken, crushed beneath the bones of the earth, what remains here, the fearful birth? Thunder clouds, closing autumn skies, the giants shall awaken, opening their eyes to a new child's land. Paradise must be left behind, or the land beneath the earth be your prison too. Aside their tombs, their darkest tombs, Odin wakes, a brother's slumber shaken, unfulfilled worth, earthbound, earthbound, earthbound. And he falls to his knees. He lowers his head, and you can see that his skull from the back of the head has been crushed inside. It is impossible for a human to survive that blow. And he keeps on saying, they are beneath us. They are under us right now. And he fades like mist. It looks like he did fall off the roof. I warned him that he's definitely fallen on his head. What sorcery is this? I don't know, but it's obviously a, an ill omen. Uh, something sleeping below us, under us. I don't know. A lot of mumbo jumbo to me, but that, uh, that statement, the giant shall awaken. Uh, I don't like the sound of that, Killian. Rather leave sleeping giants lie. What? Sven Luca, come with me. I walk to where the man vanished and just kneel down, looking to the south. As been, it seems everything points to this direction. I agree. Whatever's going to happen is going to be to the south. Who, who would have sent that apparition? He's faded away to nothing. Some, he was a messenger of some sort, telling us of what dangers lie ahead. Perhaps we have an ally in all of this. That is possible. We can only be hopeful. Well, whatever is to come, the answers are to the south. I shall follow you, my friend. Do Let's you think out. we'll be able to possibly follow these tracks and see if he veered well, off? We should certainly pay attention to the uh, those tracks of the individual, yes. our mysterious visitor. Um, it shouldn't be hard to follow these orc tracks. They're not con they're not concealing their motion. No, I'm a little concerned though, Killian. If we come across a a full fledged uh, assault of Compton by a, a warring orc tribe, 
might be a little beyond our capabilities of dealing with that. Absolutely. We may have to wait until nightfall at that point. At some point, though, Killian, the news of what's happening here must be of some interest to Jarlsberg. Agreed. I wish we could somehow get a message to him, even well, if it wasn't ourselves having to leave the land. We still have a few florins in our in our uh, coin purses here. We could perhaps pay the ferryman that took us here to send a message back to Jarlsberg. I'm sure they'd be interested in this whole Baron Duke, Grand Duke misunderstanding, and what's and the fact that there's uh, you know orc tribes on the prowl ransacking uh, defenseless farms and others. Jarlsberg will want to know that. Oh, I let's head to Compton. Agree. That's a fantastic idea, Espen. Let's go. So, uh, Espen heads out to the south striking a, a, a fairly aggressive pace to try to catch up to these orcs or more importantly, our mysterious visitor. Absolutely. Sven, Luca, follow behind me closely. As I walk behind Esben, I continue to cautiously look to and fro to each side. We've had too many surprises lately, Esben. Let's be cautious. Agreed. <clears throat> uh, Matthias, stay close to Killian. Counting on you, uh, I'll I'll pull Matthias aside and just whisper to him. Uh, I'm going to need you to provide some cover to to Killian. We can't afford him to get burned badly again. After a couple of hours or of moving forward, you see smoke in the distance. As you keep on going. You see that Compton has been devastated completely. And somewhere along the way, you lost track of the tracks. Mm -hmm. This individual either took some other means of transportation or vanished into nothingness. Now you can see it clearly. Compton has been destroyed. There are so many orcs, at the very least 30 just in the northern part of Compton. Mm -hmm. And there are heads on pikes of the different villagers, some of them you actually recognize, including the head of Squire Kent. Well, at least now we know where Squire Kent's uh, machinations, machinations of where they've led him. Um, I'll, uh, Espen uh, motions for both Nico and Matthias to join him. Killian, we should proceed very cautiously. We don't want to bring down you know, three score orc on us. Let's uh, let's hide for now. Maybe under the cover of darkness, we can check out that tower. But Agreed. Waltzing into town right now looks like a great way to make ourselves all about a head shorter. Do you the think possibly uh, flanking all the way around to the east, trying to maybe look at old Compton would be a good uh, idea? That's a better idea. I like that. Let's uh, let's quietly and cautiously make our way to Old Compton to the east. As you keep on going, you cannot see Old Compton. It's probably a few hours to the east. But then you hear a faint sound. Wait. Wait. And from the east comes running a man in robes. He seems to be slightly blooded. He has blood on the head, on the right side of his head. But the most peculiar thing, his voice sounds exactly as the voice that you heard while being blinded. That mocking, diabolical voice that spoke to you or you, will, you, will, you were blinded. And he speaks, wait, wait. And he starts to catch his breath. <sighs> who, who, who are you? I pull my sword out hold it down, ready position. I point at him with the uh, with my free hand. Your voice is familiar to me. I'll give you my name, but first, who are you? He raises his hands almost pleadingly, and he says, I, I'm Brother Russell of the Order of Thor. We're good friends with Brother Aemon. Brother Are you Aemon? familiar with him? Is he okay? He was last we saw. Oh, thank Thor. 
Brother Eamon, he's still at the keep, right? Yes, that's where we left him. What brings you here? Explain your injuries. I, I may almost died at Compton. I was rescued by a guard, but an orc, he, he almost killed me. Are there any other survivors? Is it all lost? No, but I saw a barge. A barge that was coming from the east. It should still be around. They they were waiting to see what was happening. They were quite surprised because of the attack on Compton. I didn't speak to them, but they were pointing and they seemed to be arguing among themselves. Two men, an older man and a young, like a teenager. Hmm. Uh, Brother Russell. My name's Espen. This is Killian. I I have a what appears to be maybe a, a strange question. Why is it that your voice is so familiar to me? Have we ever met? Uh, have you been to Halford, sir? Sir, Halford is to the west of here. Can't say that I have. Then I don't think we have met before, sir. You're not in the habit of visiting people with visions and such visions brother Eamon had a vision he said that thor showed to him this image of strangers coming from the east to help us hmm. Hmm. well that could very well be us espen gives a flashy smile and with his free hand runs his hand through his hair then sheathes his sword. Let's take a look at those wounds. Maybe we can dress them for you. It's just my head, sir. If you have perhaps bandages or something, at least some clothes to, to stop this blood. Nico, come over here. Uh, I reach into Nico's backpack, uh, taking the large blanket there and grabbing the hem of it with my small knife. I'll I'll cut a strip of that blanket off and then uh, hand it over to, to Nico. Yeah, why don't you bandage him up with this? The individual ties up his head and he smiles. Uh, I'm very grateful, sir. Are I you am familiar? Sure. Excuse me, sir. Are you familiar where Old Compton is? Old Compton, that is an accursed place. It is at least two hours from here to the east. I know the way if you want to go there, but why would you wish to approach such a damned place? We have, uh, we have a special quest um, that may actually provide some answers for the, the troubled times that are afflicting your lands. Please lead on. We will be in your debt. Very well, sir, but I am sure that this is all the works of the order of the serpent the order of the serpent you say yes they are nefarious individuals they are a tribe of, of humans they lie in the forests they move constantly in the southeast and southwest sections of the forests between ashleywood and yes the exact river that separates the western part of the forest. I can take you there if you wish as well. But I must warn you, there are several, at least 20 of them. Uh, what issue have you had with this Order of the Serpent? I am sure they have been capturing people. Have you seen those corpses? They look like jelly when they die. They look like such a mess. I am sure they are doing something, working some nefarious magic. Hmm. I have indeed seen such corpses. Disgusting. I reach into my pocket and pull out a slip of paper out of my pouch. Have you seen this symbol before? Does this have anything to do with them? The eye and the claw. Brother Eamon warned me about that. I am not knowledgeable about it, but... It feels so wrong. There is some evil emanating from it. 
there's much evil in this land. Esben, we have so many things to tackle. I don't know where to begin. Well, um, it sounds as though this order of the serpent is something we should follow up on, Killian, but we have this key. Yes. I think that, uh, let's get the, let's find this lockbox first. I lower my voice slightly so I'm not announcing this to Brother Russell, who, who I still am somewhat suspicious of, this brother. I can't shake the feeling that I've heard his voice in my head. Me as well. It sounds Perhaps like an individual from earlier. The it's a little convenient, don't you think, that he alone escaped? That he alone, you know, can give point us towards this order of the serpent? I wonder if I wonder if we're being used. Brother Russell, would you mind leading us to Old Compton? Perhaps with your help and guidance, we will be able to unravel what's going on. Very well, sir, but I do not wish to enter that area. I can lead you to that place, but I do not wish to enter it. That won't be required. Just lead us to the uh, ruins and we'll take it from there. Brother Russell starts walking in front. After a couple of hours, you quickly reach your destination. The animals are so quiet in these parts and you encounter nothing on the way. It is obvious that this place is oftentimes avoided. In the distance, you see many cottages, houses in ruins. Brother Russell stops and points in that direction to the east and says, I will go no further. Understood. Thank you for your help, Brother Russell. Perhaps uh, you could wait here for just a moment. I don't anticipate that we'll be here long. Very well. Would you perhaps want me to contact the people in the Varch? They should still be around. I, I'd much rather meet them myself. If you would just indulge us, we won't be long. We, we will not be long. Very well. Wise choice. I fear for his life by himself with all these orcs about. True. Plus, in a low tone, I'm still not convinced he's not going to sell us down the river. Sven, perhaps you wouldn't mind giving Russell just some company as we go into Compton. You never know what might be lurking about. Brother Russell seems very relieved. He puts his hand to his chest and says, thank you. I was hoping you would say that. You're very welcome. I, uh, I see what, uh, what Killian's doing and I, with a subtle hand signal, I signal to Nico to, to stay put as well. Matthias, with me. Let's go. I reach down and go ahead and get my crossbow out, make sure the bolt is ready. Slowly following Esben, very cautiously looking from side to side. Now, we're looking for a lockbox. He couldn't remember if it was here or in his tower. Fortunately, he didn't give us much of a, a map for old Compton. We really don't have much to go on. I hate to lose the manpower. We could use them to look through a lot of this ground, but we'll have True. to do it. Uh, I'll take out the key that uh, Lothian gave us. I'll just take a look at this key and see if, you know, examining it looking for any markings or distinctive things about it as I scan the ruins, looking for uh, anything that looks like a, a somewhat nicer dwelling or even the ruins of a tower, perhaps. This old Compton looks more like a, like a swamp. Some of the places they have turned into small marshy areas. Almost all of the houses are in complete ruins but it gives you the impression that something huge stepped on them as if some huge battering ram was just thrown into the houses constantly. Mm. Everything is damaged. The ground is muddy in general, but farther to the east, there is a graveyard area. And in that graveyard stands some sort of mausoleum or crypt. 
Well, if we're going to have anything locked in this place, it's let's start with that, that crypt over there. I'll move over to it. As you approach it, hand. somewhere yep. around, you hear this sound. Clack, 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 clack. Like bones hitting together. Mm -hmm. You hear that? Yes. My sword leaves its scabbard. So I scan around, trying to localize the sound. The sound has stopped, and you cannot a certain where it comes from. Mm -hmm. Matthias, stay close to Killian. I'll move up to the uh, the mausoleum and test the door. It looks as if something huge had smashed against the wall, against the door. So if you push hard enough, you would be able to push it inwards to gain access into the crypt. I... Uh take a step back and then with with a boot I'll try to kick the door in you smash it in quite easily you can see the insides it is fairly not so large perhaps the size of a small tavern and at much as much in the center lies a coffin shattered into pieces but you see a glint of metal inside that sarcophagus. I, I see something. Yeah, it looks like there's just enough light for me to get in here. I'm just going to go try to grab it. I'll step into the, the uh, mausoleum towards that glint of metal in the uh, sarcophagus. It is a lockbox. Whoa, Killian, I think I found something. I pick up the lockbox and come out of the mausoleum. I hurriedly approach. Esben, what have you found? Look at this. I hold it up for you to inspect. <laughs> Key still in hand. This must you be You suddenly it. start to hear uh, again this sound of bones. Clack, 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 clack. And almost out of nowhere, all around you, you are surrounded by at least seven skeletons dressed in robes, crimson robes, mm. and they start to march towards you. Mm. Quickly Wait, looking come. around, there's seven of them. There's four of us. Skeletons? Ha! This should be no problem at all. Luca, I, use your staff. Keep them at bay while we take care of these others. I limber up, draw my sword, placing the uh, lockbox at uh, at my feet. Motion for Matthias to join me as we we engage in combat against these skeletons. I maneuver just behind has been waiting for my chance to seize an opportunity. They are now within striking distance of you. I'll take a. I limber up, and then I lunge forward with my blade in front, trying to take the uh, lead skeleton's head off right at its neck. It's a slashing blow. Matthias at my side. The skeleton lunges at you. You strike in time. However, you miss as this skeleton moves faster than expected. And Matthias suffers two points of damage. He gets raked by this nasty looking skeleton claws. And now they are surrounding Killian. Mm. I kneel down. Take a moment. Then rise and use my mental ability to strike out all around me in every direction. It seems that these skeletons have some sort of power. For a moment, they just, they seem to be paralyzed just for a second. And you manage to see that their faces, their mouths are covered in blood. 
it seems that these skeletons have bitten someone recently and they still they jump at Killian and the crossbow presented an obstacle in attacking him but they still managed to injure him slightly dealing two points of life damage Espen yells out Killian get out of there I think you have to just run directly in front of myself to whatever skeleton is in my way, just driving my dagger into it, pushing forward. I take the look at the direction that Killian is running, and Matthias and I will try to take out that that skeleton. Um, I'll go for a, I'll go for a leg, trying to sever a leg bone. In your frenzy, you manage to take down three of such skeletons. And now Killian is free. He is away from the skeletons within safe distance. And you, hear, you keep on hearing sounds of bones in the distance as if more are coming. Mm. We got to get out of here. I look around for the lockbox. I don't want this to be in vain, Killian. Um, spotting the lockbox where I put it down, I'm going to make a dash for it. As I move, I sheath my longsword so it's not in my way as I dive for the box, trying to roll underneath the uh, the skeleton's claws as they come after me. You are successful in your endeavor. The lock box is in your possession. And thanks to your maneuvers, you have quite a bit of ground to move through without endangering yourself with these skeletons. But now you can see clearly that even five more skeletons are approaching from the east. There's more coming, more than we can handle. Matthias, Killian, let's get out of here. Let's make a run for it. Agreed, Luca, let's go, let's go. Tuck the lockbox under one arm, my other arm swinging freely so I can hopefully sprint out of here, trying to get out of this, uh, this cemetery and this cursed town as quickly as we can. You easily make your escape back outside of Old Compton. The moment you leave this accursed place, the skeletons in a very surreal way, they seem to vanish into the ground, almost as if the ground had pulled them down. And you can see Brother Russell running. Are you okay? I heard battle noises. Yes, Brother Russell, we, we made it out. It was definitely much worse than I could have imagined. Esmond, this is not a place I want to return to, friend. No, I agree. There's absolutely zero maidens here. And the ones that are here are far too skinny for my tastes. All bone, not even any skin. Uh, Killian, come over here. Let me take a look at that scratch. Uh, ah, yeah, we should probably clean that out. <clears throat> Agreed. What, uh, did you, what did you find, friend? Oh, we have this lockbox. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's hoping this key fits. Um, got, uh, I'll kneel down, put the lockbox on the ground, uh, kneeling in front of it, take out that key that Lothian gave us, insert it into the keyhole, and turn. Interestingly enough, the key looks so normal, unremarkable, but the moment you insert it into the lock, it, it shines slightly like a greenish light emanating from within the key. The lockbox opens and there's only a piece of paper and a medallion. Mm -hmm. The piece of paper has something written upon it. I'll pick up the paper and pass it to Killian. What is this? I look at the paper, I'm trying to decipher what it holds. It has many drawings of that same eye with the claw. And there's so much nonsense, nonsense written into it. But you can tell that something that does make sense, it says, it's all my fault. It's back in my tower. I am sure I hid it there. Almost certain it is there. This medallion will grant protection to those who have understanding of the matters of magic and the mind. Hmm. Hmm. This is very interesting, but 
it just appears like all the thoughts that he was having towards the end of whatever this event was. Uh, let me see the medallion as well. Of course. I reach in with my gloved hand and pull out the medallion and hand it over to you. Killian immediately receives the psychic impression of this medallion offering protection, safeguarding you from harm. Its power is limited, but it will, it will surely protect the one who wears it. Mm, very interesting. Seems like some type of amulet or protection. Well, surely it'll do better than the protection you have now. That crossbow isn't uh, much of armor. Yes, this not is much true. in the way of armor. Uh, it's also kind of dashing on you. Oh, Looks good. Thank you. Oh, we just got to find a place that actually has a decent uh, nightlife. The moment you put it on, it shines slightly. Oh. Oh, it matches your eyes. Looks good. I clap you on the shoulder. I have to admit, I didn't think that was actually going to fit this box. You have better luck here than you do gambling, my friend. And now the medallion reacts to something. It is Killian feels a strange pull leading him towards the south. It's south. almost like this medallion is directing me to the south, Espen. Maybe towards that barge? Hey, Brother Russell, where's the barge from here? Well, considering we have walked two hours, we just need to keep on heading southwards. Surely they are still there, hopefully. Apparently, that's where we need to go. Agreed. Let's head out. Matthias, come over here so I can take a look at your wounds. See how bad they are. Bah. It's just a flesh wound. You'll be able to walk that off no time. Suddenly... As you are walking, Killian feels as if the medallion is pulling downwards. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kneel down towards the ground. What's wrong, my friend? It feels like the medallion's pulling me downwards. Oh. I almost wonder. I'm just going to take my hand and move around into the soil. Hmm. Does that have something to do with that odd... Uh drinking song that the roofer was telling us about the sleeping under us below us they are beneath us very possible he also mentioned a place hey brother russell where are the ayland hills ayland hills that sounds like a legend there is this story that in this southern section of rickshire there were giants and back then in those times of mythology it was known as the Ayland Hills. Mm, this whole area then? Yes, specifically the South, War South Forests. Hmm. Pulling you down. Are there caves around here, Brother Russell? You are suddenly interrupted because Killian has found this sack. It was quite clumsily hidden. Just a few... Just a bit of dirt over, over it, as if hidden in a hurry. And you can see that something leathery, like some sort of vest, lies within the sack because it's not very well tied up. What is this? Take a look at this. I open the pouch and just bring it out of the dirt. Oh, I'll lift it up. I'll take a look. Well, I hand it over here. Let me look at this. Yes, please do. I'll brush off the little stray bits of dirt from the uh, poorly closed uh, bag and take a good look at this leather. The leather vest is incredibly beautiful. It is effectively some sort of leather protection. And then Brother Russell gets really excited. Look, that vest, it seems to be magical. I am certain of it. Look how it's, it's almost untainted there is some sort of purity coming from it and it looks so clean despite being buried oh well brother russell it doesn't look like it's your size uh, maybe i'll try it on mm -hmm. looks like odin is watching us there has been yeah perhaps our luck has finally turned uh i'll matthias come over here and help me uh 
we take off some of my my leather armor and uh and don the vest instead see how it fits Killian starts to receive some sort of message from the medallion it seems this vest was for destined to be worn by holy swordsmen of odin it grants the user protection the wearer of this vest he will be protected and his ability in sword fighting is exceptional even more so ah very interesting it's i'm learning about this vest through my medallion this and it's telling me things i believe it's been blessed by odin well and now it's blessed by me look at this i brandish my sword and do some some flashy moves oh it feels great plus it's so dashing <laughs> oh, the ladies won't know what hit him you seem even quicker with that on I, interesting in fact i do i feel like the blade just dances in my hand this is fantastic yeah uh, even as great as all this is i still don't want to return to the skeleton land no 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 more this is quite content. enough uh, this is a better souvenir than the scars that Matthias and you will bear. Very true. Uh, that amulet of yours is quite handy. Uh, make sure if you feel Great. a tug in a certain direction, you let us know. You might be able to find some other treasure in these cursed lands. And with we'll that, need as much as I'll, uh, I'll sheathe my sword and, and keep heading south uh, under the direction of Brother Russell towards this barge and its bargemen. As you are walking, Brother Russell continues talking and he says, no, I don't think I know of any caves around here. But then again, I am not exactly the explorer type. And oh no, the barge, where is it? Look to the east, they are so far away. Hey, hey, and, and Russell starts to yell at them, but they are so far away. I grab Brother Russell. Let's not be yelling too loudly here. It's just remember that wound on your forehead. There are orc about. Oh, sorry. Yes, the 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 orcs. Yes. Should we increase our pace some? And just continue to follow. Yeah, I agree. Let's see if we can catch it. I'll pick up the pace, even uh, a light jog, as we try to catch up with it. As fast as you try, they are no longer seen. They are off in the distance. Hmm. And Russell says, if only we could have gotten here, perhaps perhaps 20 minutes sooner. Wasn't meant to be. Odin didn't will it, I say, and I kind of wink at Killian. Um, well, we've been marching now for a while. Probably time for some rations. Let's uh, Let's stop here. Take a rest. Agreed. Perhaps we can wait for nightfall and discuss what we may be doing over in Compton. Good idea, Killian. Matthias, set up the tent. Uh, Nico, maybe make a small fire. Small this time, please, Nico. Not a bonfire like last time. We need it small. Don't want to draw too much attention to ourselves here. You each spend one ration. And now, as you are resting, it is midnight. Mm. Let's go check out that tower. That note that you found and read said something about he left it in the tower. Maybe it's maybe Lothian's in his half baked state. Perhaps he's he's misre he misremembered which, where he put it. He sent the lockbox to the. Do you think this key works for more than one lockbox? Is that even a thing? I don't know. You wizard types uh, bond beyond me. It's very possible. I'm trying to remember myself. I look down and pull out the wine skin from my pouch. I don't remember if we were supposed to drink this tonight or the, the night further. That's right. No, no, no. It was exactly at midnight. Well, do you think it's exactly midnight? I look up to try to see the stars and moon. You are certain this is the time. Bottoms up. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. Thor, bless us. 
guide us, show us the way. Amen, brother. Like uncork and down the, the flask of liquid. Uh, as it starts to go down your throat, it tastes just like normal water, but there is this, this hint of seafood. Tastes a bit like seafood. Yeah. And then you, you feel slightly, just bare, just slightly nauseous. Well, <sighs> wait. <laughs> After drinking this, weren't we warned by someone about don't drink it? <laughs> but they never said what it was. Oh, well, too late now. It is too late. My Let's head to Compton. Brother Russell, we intend to investigate a wizard's tower. You're welcome to join us, but uh, I understand if it's a little too much adventure for you, you not being the adventuring type and all. Yes, I would rather stay away from Compton, sir. There are so many orcs. I counted at least 40, 40 orcs. Well, we don't plan on making introductions. We want to go and leave quietly. Where shall I wait for you, sirs? Why don't you wait uh, where we first met? Very well. I will hide. Yes, do. Good plan. We're going to need all hands on deck for this one. Nico, Mat Matthias, Sven, Luca. This is the time. This is it. We're going to be quiet. Let's leave our packs just outside the city. We can travel lighter, Agreed. maybe faster. As you approach Compton, you see that the, the town yeah, effectively has been devastated. The small fence that was around it offered no protection. And there are two orc guards standing near the place where you can get into the tower. It is quite easy for you to make the, the climb over the fence if you wish to, but these two orcs are armed with several hand axes and they look pretty big and strong now that you take a closer look at them and they have this mark of the scorched, scorched hand on their chest. Mm. They are looking everywhere in all directions. They are quite alert, but they haven't spotted you yet. Killian, perhaps a diversion of some sort. Exactly what I was thinking. Nico, be ready. I'm going to walk probably about 30 yards out and begin screaming. Help you. us! Help us! Help us! They're all Nico, around. Nico and Espen will will uh, wait to see if the orcs move. Should they move, they'll crouch down and will approach from behind, trying to get the drop on them. One of the orcs runs towards the sound, but the other orc stays, stays put, looking in all directions. Nico, I'll whisper. You go after the one that's heading for it, for Killian. I got this one. I'll stand up so I can be seen and then stumble as if I'm badly wounded towards the orc, holding my side, disguising my sword that's in my hand at the low ready. The orc approaches Esben. He seems almost pleased with his uh, apparently injured state. And he, He's too carefree. He even lowers his axe a bit and he chuckles <laughs> and he starts to move towards you. I hold out my hand. Please, mercy, mercy, as I stumble a little closer, gauging the distance between him so that he could be in my perfect lunge. Please. He is now within distance and he reaches out with his hand as if to take your own hand. The Almost last like moment, I grab the, his wrist and use it as leverage to catapult myself towards his chest with my blade in front. The orc is skewered completely. It almost slumps towards you. His weight almost removes the rapier from your 
hand, but he falls over and dies. I whisper into his dying face. That's for the half orc you murdered. Now and the then... other orc is approaching Killian. Nico is sneaking up quietly behind. My mercenary getting closer. He spots Killian and starts to say something in Orkish. Ushla here. Quick, no, Nico. No. Don't let him raise the alarm. The orc starts running towards Killian. He has an axe ready. He seems to be with the intent of attacking. Nico, now! I'm going to fire into the orc's chest. She's coming towards me as well. It's a perfect hit. The bolt goes into the orc's chest and he stops almost. The, the force just made him trip to the side and he starts clutching for a moment, but then stops moving. Ah, oh, look at this. I walk over the orc, move the axe to the side, and slowly begin to just pat him down, seeing if he has anything on his cold corpse. He has some awful smelling rations on him. You almost get sick by smelling them. There's some sort of rodent. Foul creature. Espen That's... will uh, drag the corpse of the orc that he killed over into the uh, to the fence line where there's a place to uh, hopefully disguise hit the body. Um, as he does that, he, he had multiple axes, hand axes on them. He'll... Uh, He'll examine each one and then take the one in the best condition, tucking it into his belt. They are mostly primitive tools, but one is uh, looks pretty sharp. I begin walking back towards the tower. Espen, it's probably not exactly what you were thinking, but that's all I could come up with. Well, done, it worked friend. perfect. What are you talking about, my friend? <laughs> Uh, I'll take a side long look at Nico. You were supposed to be in that fight. I do expect uh, something from you. Yes. All right. You stand watch here. Killian, let's go into the tower. I look for the, uh, the remnants of the rope that we had used before to climb up to the tower. It is not there anymore. It seems someone has been removing right. that or examining this place because it is not no longer there. But it is still easy enough to climb. Sheathe my sword. Wow, I would have sheathed it already when I hid the body. I start scaling up the uh, the tower using handholds that I hopefully remember more or less from our first trip here. Sven, Luca, keep cautious watch there's no telling what may have hurt us i slowly follow us very cautiously up the wall nico and matthias will also scale the wall joining us in the tower you hear that somewhere in the ruins of compton the orcs are perhaps having some sort of contest you hear battle cries and shouts perhaps some sort of match is going on and now esben is at the very top and as explained by Lothian, the lockbox is supposed to be hidden within the bricks. And there is a suspicious looking bridge, uh, sorry, uh, brick. It is very different in color. Killian, over here. I take my What's knife it? and pry around that brick of a different color. Did you find it already? Loosen it. Well, this brick is a different color than the rest. It's also in the right location, according to that madman's ravings. Good eye. Good eye. Let's take a look. Perhaps it's here. And then I'll pry, I'll use my small blade to loosen the mortar around that brick to remove it. As you do that, you shatter the brick. It wasn't too noisy. It was very easy to crumble, and there is a lockbox, a smaller lockbox, but still the same size uh, of the same of the other lock. That's it. 
I pull it out in the in the dim light because I don't risk uh, using a torch. Just move it over to the opening of the tower where we might be able to get some starlight or moonlight, enough to at least open this and see what's in it. We'll try the key that I used before. Hopefully it fits. The moment the key approaches the lock, it starts to glow slightly, just like last time. Oh, this is a good sign. I think it'll work. I turn the key to open the lockbox. There are a few objects inside. There seems to be a journal and a strange diamond-necked key and a letter. Okay. I pass the journal to you, Killian. Yes, thank you, Esben. I place it underneath my robe securely. Do you letter. think these orcs will stay here? Hmm. Once there's no more plunder, I imagine they'll just move on. Perhaps we should just vacate until another time. I'd like to, if we can, we're up high in this tower. Let's at least see what they're doing. Let's do. And we may just be witnessing some war crime, but let's go and take a look. I'll awesome. move around the tower looking for a, an upper window. I can peer out to see what the all the hubbub is about at street level. There are no windows, but there are some cracks, and you can see with enough certainty that the entire town is overrun. Effectively, it seems as if 30 or more orcs are moving around the town, and they look quite savage, quite brutish. They have impaled or put the heads of the different villagers on pikes and there is blood everywhere mm. as been yes These savages deserve to die i know i know but i don't think it's in in our in the interests of uh of anyone for us to throw our lives away there's 30 of them easily do you know anything about these orc customs? If I were to challenge their leader, would that even work? Would they even accept such a challenge? Possibly with the other clan. I don't really know enough, but for something tells me these savages wouldn't care. They won't, they have no honor. Mm, agreed. We should we should leave this place. Report what we found. I agree. I take the letter from the lockbox and secret that away in my vest and then the key with a diamond shape on it also into my pocket. Then retrieve the key from the lockbox. Put that back in my pocket. The journal, you suddenly perceive this smell of seafood coming from the journal. Hmm. Possibly light the drink. Is that fish? I hate fish. It smells like pickled fish. Disgusting. Well, we can examine this when we're not right next to 30 bloodthirsty orcs overrun this town. We should get out of here. I'm curious, they seem occupied enough. Would you mind if we just looked through the tower once more? Uh, you're right. When will we have a chance to get back here? That's a good point. Matthias, Nico, head down to the bottom of the tower. When we leave, we're going to be leaving quickly. I'll slowly start to go down the stairs as well to the second floor. I follow. You suddenly, everyone stumbles and suffers one life point of damage. It is incredibly dark. Oh. You need several light sources. It is not enough. It's, it's probably too use. dangerous. This is too much. This tower is in poor repair. Let's carefully move back. 
if we light it, if we light a, a torch in here, even without windows, there's enough holes in the in the brick of this building that surely someone's going to notice. It's possible. Carefully, slowly, Espen retraces his steps back up to where we came in the tower. I'll slowly begin to ascend as well. It is easy enough for you to do it. And so it is done. Killian, you're looking a little pale. We should get you out of here. Yes, it's been enough for one day. <laughs> Indeed. A lifetime even. Um, I'll, I'll follow you down. You seem a little bit better knowledge as far as climbing. Yeah. Well, and if, you're, if your handhold slips, then perhaps I can catch you. I'll uh, head down the tower. True. You descend quite safely. You are now at the bottom. Let's leave. Should we go find Russell? Yes, we'll find him where we originally found him, where he met us on the on the outskirts of town. Having we was running towards us, I believe at the time, back over the fence, with the uh, with my mercenaries with me. Let's move. Yes, Lucas Finn. Let's all take a very wide berth. As you reach that same spot, Russell is nowhere to be seen. I knew it. The snake. Boy, next holy man that passes himself off. Hey, no offense, Sven, Luca. But I just don't... can't say I trust these men. They throw around the names of Odin and Thor pretty, pretty easily. What did he say? It says on the Order of the Serpent? Yes. And that was uh, a tribe to the east of here. Let's put some distance between us and this ruined, this ransacked town of Compton. You can rest for the evening, heal up a little bit, and then head out to find this Order of the Serpent. We have a little bit of time. I believe we have a couple weeks before we're expected back at the keep. At the keep. I trust your judgment. Let's do that. We'll head uh, no slightly north and east of here, looking for a place that's somewhat secluded that we can uh, set up camp. You find such a place. You can rest easily. At least it appears so. Each one recovers one life point and a psychic point. And you need to spend one ration. That's my last ration. We're going to start getting hungry here. Boy, I sure wish we had those apples still. I'll split my remaining rations with you, Espen. There's no telling where we'll be able to actually get anything else around here. I have two rations to give you here. Oh, thank you. At least we're not feeding that brother Russell. I'm still sore over that. I I can't help him. They, hopefully they didn't capture him. Who knows? Oh, true. True, that's true. It would do no one any good if he was captured. Unless he was in their camp all along. Ugh. So many questions. When it's light enough uh, to break camp, I suggest that we we head towards this uh, roaming tribe. A roaming tribe? Didn't that that roofer say something about gypsies? Suddenly, you all become blind once again. Not again. You see only this white line in front of you. And you have visions. The journal and the letter they start to burn away in your visions. They burn away and the key melts to nothing. And suddenly you can open, you can one, you can see once again before you, the line that appeared before your eyes is no longer there. You are able to see clearly. Espen, do you still have the journal? I handed the it key? to you. I have the key. It's oh, here key? in my pocket. Yes. I check and quickly for the journal to make sure everything's okay. I'll pull the letter out from where I had it in the inside pocket of the vest. 
looking at the uh, letter now in the envelope, looking for a, a wax seal on it. There is no seal whatsoever. It can easily be opened. Time to read this, I think. That was an ill omen. Yes, I open the letter. reading that, do the same. I'm going to open the journal and slowly take my time flipping through it. When it comes to the journal, it is a loose assortment of notes, ramblings, scrawlings, many images containing that symbol of the eye and the claw. There seem to be instructions speaking of this elixir of the eye and how the essence of Dagon goes into those that drink it, the elixir of the eye. It appears constantly throughout the journal. There's so much dark imagery and obscure notes that you cannot identify. Now, when it comes to the letter, it is easier to understand. It reads, Dear Sky, if you are finding this, then I am surely of them now. There is no hope for me, and you should not blame yourself, nor anyone but me. These masters without name, or any way to identify them beyond their horrid visages, have made me do things I am not proud to have done. Barclay, Brother Aemon, the guards of the keep, we are all more shallow forms of ourselves now. Whatever villainy we were capable of is only amplified by their malevolence. Stay gone from here, Sky. Do not return to this place, here, or the keep. If you can, make it to Jarlsburg, where Andrich might help you. Get word that something dark is coming, something beyond what either of us could have fathomed. I only hope in whatever life fate has for me that I can make peace with all things. I am sorry I could not have done better by you. Signed, Lothian. Killian, read this. I pass it to Killian so he can read the same. I think this changes things. What do you think? We must definitely get word to Jarlsberg. We must. Something truly terrible is afoot. They didn't have a clue as to bad as the scenario unfolding being as bad as it is. No. The stewards corrupted. Brother AM is sure. corrupted. What good could we do here at this point? I think the best we could do at this point is to take this news back to Jarlsberg. Perhaps even to the ears of the king. Agreed. The problem is the barge that took us here came through Compton. Well, that way is closed. Mm. How will we get back to Jarlsberg? The barge that Brother Russell told us about, well, that has already sailed. <sighs> I feel like this is such pressing news for us to mess around with some order of the serpent is but a distraction. We could perhaps get aid as well. Yes. A solid company of spearsmen. Clean out Compton. Make their way through. That, it makes me wonder. The delegation from... Uh, Oh, what was it from? From our our rivals to the uh, to the you east. You suddenly remember it's Canesmore. Canesmore, Canesmore. yes, Canesmore. that's it, Canesmore. Surely they they're aware of what's going on here. They've had a delegation. Could it be as far spread as to Kingsmore as well? That's just speculation. The letter, the letter makes me think that this is something that. Uh, Lothian talks about his masters, that someone else is uh, directing this. Hmm. I wish he was in a better condition to speak to us. Shall you suddenly suffer this piercing headache and you fall unconscious, both of you. You can only hear the distant sound of 
someone coming in a hurry and your hirelings standing ready to fight with battle cries and suddenly you hear nothing at all. And so the time passes and you have visions of this strange fishman preparing some sort of liquid. And you see three hooded figures. You cannot see their faces. They are standing somewhere deep underground. And suddenly you awaken with a start. You awaken in cold sweat. It is day. You are now inside of a cabin. And next to you, there is a man and an elvish woman. They look at you puzzled and with slight worry. They have awoken, Vivian, look at them. Hello, friends, are you okay? You are standing in a, you are resting in a single large bed. Espen. Oh, man. Yes. No more drinking from flasks at midnight. I'm done with that. But where are we? Where is this place? You, an elf? Oh, boy. Suddenly, this man, he looks to be in his 30s, blonde hair, brown eyes. He tells you, first, calm down. Vivian has told me that, and the elf woman whispers something into his ear. You drank the blood of Dagon, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I think we probably did. We were told by uh, someone else that it wasn't that, but instead a... Uh, an elixir from Odin. With a worried look, this man continues. I am Idris, the ranger, and this is my friend Vivian. We have been noticing so many bad things happening. We found you as you were being attacked by this group of hooded individuals. We managed to fend them off with the help of your friends that are waiting outside. We managed to take you with the help of, do you know about the rough skin orcs? Yes. Yes, we do. We've had some dealings with them. Some of them have survived. They That's were almost news. exterminated. And they mentioned that they have met with strangers a few days back. They probably meant you. So they helped us bring you back to our cottage we are currently in Ozenwood. This is to the southwest of Compton. These surviving orcs have joined forces with the tribe of eight. Those orcs are unlike the more savage, destructive orcs that have taken Compton. They are trying to form an alliance with the gnolls in the south, with the Fangrin gnolls. Hmm. Do you know about such tribes? I can't say uh, that I do. I'm not very familiar about such things. We're fairly new to this land, and it's been very unfortunate our experiences so far. You come from elsewhere, don't you? Indeed we do. We were here to, uh, to deliver a message and offer the support of Jarlsberg. This land has been overtaken by some great evil. This but Dagon that you speak of, most likely. Hmm? Yes, but there is something amiss. My friend Vivian, she sometimes perceives things, and she thinks it's something else entirely. Hmm. Now, I am telling her that perhaps she is confused. There have been so, so many dark sorceries enacted, so many, so much death those corpses melting into some sort of ooze. There is some dark work manipulating everything. And Vivian keeps telling me there is something else. Perhaps it's just Dagon. Vivian, please, let's not make things even more complicated. No, what do please, you think, Vivian, sir? what are you saying? I, I turn to the elf and I try to lay on the charm. You've been very kind. Perhaps you could help us. We would be most grateful. She suddenly speaks to you directly. 
I feel as if everyone has been deceived in some way. I cannot identify what is the source of this madness, but I feel as if everyone has been tricked. I think you're right. I think you're right. Unfortunately, we are among those who have been tricked by those who claim to be our friends. Again and again, we get set upon or set on tasks to destroy those that we're told are, are evil. And it turns out that they're not evil at all. Such was our initial, uh, our initial contact with the orc, the, uh, the tribe of eight that you speak of. Idris interrupts and says, there is a certain superstition in this land that once you drink the blood of Dagon, you are tied to this land. If you leave this land without getting to the source of this evil, you will surely die. Ugh, great. There goes that idea, Espen. Friend. Do we, do you know of anyone who could send a message, um, a merchant, uh, someone who can, can get word back to Jarlsberg? We must pass along this information. I am sad to say I don't. We are hermits. We do not even come into close contact with Compton or Halford, but I have seen a barge coming every couple of days sometimes mm. if i were to leave you with a a letter and some florins for your trouble and for the bargeman could you deliver it to the barge yes certainly killian what do you think perhaps you could draft something i'll get to you can send this letter uh, it's important that it it gets there yes i'll put it together for us I will make sure of it. I offer him uh, four florins, one uh, with the uh, expectation that he'll pay some to the bargeman to make sure that the the letter is delivered. Vivian suddenly speaks. There have also been some strange activities just west of here. A spire has come out of nowhere. Hmm. A spire? It looks like a huge fang coming from somewhere deep beneath the earth. And the orcs have been constantly moving from west to east. They seem to be heading to specific, specific places in the east and the west as if they have a purpose, perhaps a base. Hmm. How, how far away is this spire if we were to travel to it on foot? Keep on going south from this cabin and you will reach it in perhaps an hour walk. Oh, it's that close. Hmm. How do we repay your kindness? We just want you to help in this. In this land, we rarely have people trying to make sense of things. I, I'd like to show you something and I'll pull out the uh, diamond shaped key that we retrieved from the second lockbox. Have you ever seen anything of this sort? I pass it to her. She takes it and she puts it close to her forehead and she seems to be disturbed by it and answers. This key will take you to other dimensions, perhaps deep beneath the earth. You must obtain access to this place. I am sure that the great evil lies within. I can't thank you enough. I bow deeply to the, the elf. and then I, retrieve the key. I hate to trouble you, but do you happen to have any 
possible healing ointment or bandages I can use. I've had quite a, a rough journey. The ranger seems to be a bit hesitant, but then says, well, sure, I can get you some healing salve. He walks up and takes some salve and gives it to you. It will surely heal most of your injuries. Thank the you. salve effectively heals to life points when applied. I'll take the time since we're here and open the salve and begin to rub it into all my burns and my wounds. While he's doing that, I'll I'll ask again if I could impose one other message since the these uh, the ranger and his companion are in contact with the the orc tribe of eight. Could you please pass along a message that we have uh, we have avenged some, though not all yet, uh, of the scorched oh it was a scorched hand, the yes. scorched hand uh, orc tribe. And our, our blades are thirsty for more. And I will pass along the uh, sharp hand axe as proof of death. I took this off one that I killed. Please pass it along to our, our friends at the tribe of eight. Idris the ranger takes the axe and smiles. They will surely consider you orc friends. Again, I'm in your debt. Yes, we owe you greatly our lives. Uh, I'll, I glance out the, the um, window opening to gauge the time of day to see if we have time still daylight to get to the spire in an hour. It looks to be the morning ab about 11 o'clock. How long were we out for? Wow. Well, rough time. I think. I think time's of the essence. Killian, let's gather up what we can. In an hour, we can be at that spire. And with this key, perhaps closer to our, our goal. I think that's a perfect idea. I, I open my pouch and pull out four florins as well. Here, this is the least I can do. We don't have much, but please take this as a small token. Thank you. I, uh, I'll clasp the arms with the ranger, thank him for his hospitality, bow deeply to the elf maiden, flash they, her a charming smile, of course. They give you elf. three small pouches uh, worth uh, three days of rations. Uh, once we're outside with our henchmen, I'll divide up the rations between... Uh, Nico and Matthias, make sure they're okay. Matthias did have an injury. Just want to check and see how that's healing up. I'll walk out and greet Sven and Luca. How did you fend them off? They tell you about how this ranger and the elf came. The elf seems to be quite powerful in ways of sorcery. So the battle was actually in their favor all the time. Amazing. Hmm. It's good to have friends on this side of town, isn't it, Esben? <laughs> That's for sure. I'll uh, pass along what we've learned to Matthias and Nico. Tell them of the spire we have to investigate. I'll leave out the uh, information about us drinking poisoned water that's locked us to these lands until we solve this, this conundrum. Esmond, shall we march? Yes. Yes, let's march. I can't believe I was foolish enough to fall for that. <laughs> so much uh, don't be so man. hard on yourself, friend. This, uh, this is one of those things where we were, we were lied to by those that we held in trust. Hmm. Indeed, we were duped. As you continue your walk, you can see the spire in the distance. And sure enough, after about an hour, you're now in front of it. It looks quite alien. It looks some sort of 
as if some sort of stalagmite or rocky formation just sprouted from the ground, projecting upwards. It seems impossibly high, perhaps 80 feet or more. Hmm. Never in all my years has I seen something that this nature has been. No, it worries me that it's coming up from the ground. Again, <clears throat> those, the roofer's words haunt my my mind. There's something below us, a giant's awakening. We should investigate. Inward. Well, as we move forward, Esmond's going to keep an eye out for motion at the base of the spire, seeing if there's others around, especially orcs. The place seems to be deserted, and you spot an entrance. The entrance is huge, perhaps 20 feet tall. The It's a, set, a sort of opening, a double door opening. The doors are open, swinging inwards. You can see a bit of the inside. The place seems to be some sort of ritual building. Mm -hmm. There are images on the walls, symbols. But the most disturbing thing, Everything is covered in spider webs, huge spider webs. It is strangely familiar of the ruins back near Jarlsberg. I'm getting flashbacks about slug men. Let's, uh, Nico, pass me a torch. Light a torch. Indeed. I'll go ahead and light my lantern as well. But as I step into the building i'll have the torch in my off hand and my sword in my my dominant hand holding the flame in front of me trying to scorch away the spider webs paying close attention to this the roof above the moment you step a bit further into the structure you see a huge hairy spider hanging from the west side of this structure it is three times the size. It looks to be the size of a three-story building Oof. hanging from inside the wall. Its dark eyes are just staring at the center of the structure. It seems that it hasn't noticed you. At least you think so because it has not moved. I slowly st I stop immediately, freeze in place slowly take a step back towards the door. You also obtained other details as you were looking inside. There seems to be some sort of spiral staircase going up. The place is divided into three balconies, but it is quite clear that there is no access beyond 40 feet at the half of the tower of the spire. There is some sort of roof, a stony roof, but you also managed to see some sort of huge cocoon hanging from the center of that roof. Hmm. Like an egg sac. I continue to slowly back up to leave the room. Hopefully not waking up a three-story tall spider. Once clear of the doorway, I'll turn to Killian and the rest, explain what I saw. There is the most hideous and humongous spider that I have ever seen. It's easily the size of a small cathedral. And I'll explain also the cocoon or egg sac or whatever it is that's hanging from the ceiling above and the spiral staircase that ascends to it. Oh. Esben, this is quite unfortunate. Mm. I feel like I've had a vision of this. Spin, I distinctly remember seeing you ascend a spiral staircase. I think it's time again, my friend, to test your faith. Spin, we'll sing songs in your memory if you don't make it, but I'm sure you will, not to worry. 
I feel like something is protecting you. Odin has chosen us to be on this path. Why else would we have found the spire? I hate spiders. I'll follow you to the gates and watch you ascend. You won't be alone. No. You're well, of course we're going to help him, Matthias. We're not going to abandon him. I just hate spiders. Oh. Your hireling walks carefully into the structure. He seems to be overconfident. He is moving in the most stealthy way possible, hiding behind a chair there, a table over there, wooden furniture. And suddenly his lips, he falls clumsily, making a lot of noise, but the spider doesn't move. And suddenly your hireling stands up, scratches his head, looks at the spider, looks at you, and looks completely dumbfounded. Sven, you're fine. Continue forward, my friend. It won't harm you. You got this. Sven, we believe in you. Sven moves closer to the spider and starts waving his hands. What's he doing? Then he finds some sort of stone on the ground. No. And tosses it at the spider. Sven. And it just bumps into the spider and it won't move. Mm -hmm. And looks at you. Fair enough. All right. I, well, I, with that, I kind of shrug. Espen shrugs. Huh? Torch in hand. Walks back into the spire. Let's walk into the spire together closely and go directly to the staircase. Mm. And suddenly the spider moves, but it crumbles into pieces as if it was some sort of spider mummy. That rock probably dislodged it from the, that section and it falls to pieces with a huge noise. <sighs> Wait a second. I, I look up. Don't to spiders shed stolen. their skin? Was that just the molting of that spider? Oh, perish the thought. We better get to the, wherever your vision said we needed to go. Let's go. This worries me. This place. Let's I, take uh, a brisk walk. Yeah, let's uh, let's quickly, given all the noise that was just happened, uh, let's quickly climb up this spire till we reach the cocoon. As you move up the spiral staircase that encircles the inside of this structure, you see images on the wall. They seem to be telling some sort of legend or story. And you can almost feel something deep within you, perhaps this substance related to Dagon that is allowing you to, cl to see clearly into what is being communicated through the images. You see giants fighting this strange entity Many giants fighting with weapons, huge weapons, walking upon the land. They are incredibly big. The trees, they do not, do not even reach the ankles of the giants. The images seem to be telling this story of giants vanquishing some sort of great evil. But the, the giants die in the process. Hmm. You see images of burials of the giants carrying out ceremonies for their dead. You can also see other more recent images of a man in a robe. He seems to be making some sort of pact with some abstract representation of an eye with a claw. And then this man seems to be summoning a huge spider. And then this spider seems to be destroying a town. It is not certain what town it destroyed. And then the spider dies and the legends stop. You need to go up to the upper section to keep on understanding these images. Killian, the giants, the good guys? It would appear so. They banded together to try to thwart the evil, it would seem. Could that mm -hmm. represent Lothian? And the spider? No, surely not. 
everything is kind of turned on its head. Yeah. Continue on up. As you reach the upper part, you see that the ceiling, the walls are completely infested with spider webs. Now you have a better, better appreciation of the cocoon at the center of the ceiling. There seems to be something metallic within it. It is quite big, perhaps the size, three times your size. It's a huge cocoon. It is precariously tied to the top of the building. And now you can see more about these images. You see images representing many eggs laid by the spider according to the logic of the, of the images. Mm. You see image of the image of a spider, a small spider, devouring all of the other spiders. Suddenly, you hear this scream. Matthias is pulled to the ceiling by a spider web and hidden among the spider webs, you see a spider the size of a horse and it has dragged Matthias and it bites his head off. No, Matthias has died. I quickly throw my lantern towards the spider and begin to concentrate on it, guiding it into the spider itself, trying to engulf it into flames. Matthias! It is a sure hit. The spider is knocked from its place near the ceiling and the wall, and it falls down and it is about to recover. I, I'll leap from the stairs, sword in hand, trying to fall on the spider blade first to avenge Matthias. May Odin grant me this favor. You feel as if the best you are wearing is guiding you and you stab the spider with deadly precision. It makes a horrible noise as it dies. It starts to twitch. It starts to try to reach you. It tries to bite you, but it stops moving completely. I twist my blade viciously in the corpse. And then now that it's dead, I retrieve the head of my loyal henchman, Matthias. He will get a good burial to honor his bravery. Take a moment, gather my thoughts. <laughs> I look at the cocoon, cautiously. Sven, hand me your staff. I grab the staff, try to see if I can push it from where I'm at. The cocoon moves slightly forward. And you can tell that with a bit more strength, a bit more violence, Perhaps you can dislodge it, but if so, it would fall all the way down. I begin to slowly descend, descend the staircase. Esben! I look up, coming to grips with Matthias's sudden and violent end. Yes, Killian. What is it? Are oh, you all right, my friend? I'll be fine. I'll have to speak to his family when we get back to Jarlsberg. But we'll uh, we'll give him a good burial. Yes. What can I? What are we done here? Is there any more of these things around? Uh, just I be cautious. Wipe a wet cover. cheek. Uh, having shed a tear for my loyal mercenary. <laughs> loyal mercenary. For Matthias, he had a name. Uh, um, yes, I climb back up the stairs towards you, Killian. Wiping the gore from my blade. Odin, guide my mind. I focus all my thoughts upon the actual cocoon and begin to try to grab it and slowly drift it down to the earth below. It's too heavy, but you barely managed to accomplish it. 
Uh, I begin to stumble down the stairs somewhat. I'll steady you, uh, making sure you don't fall. Thank you, husband. As we get back down to the bottom, I'll take my blade out and carefully slit the cocoon open with the sharp blade, looking for whatever's metal inside. Inside of the cocoon, you see three skeletons dressed in rusty armor. The armor is ruined, unusable. It was once perhaps plate armor, but it is completely ruined. They seem to be some sort of knights. Mm -hmm. And there are some, a couple of scrolls with them. I'll pass the scrolls over to you, to uh, Killian, and remove the uh, corpses of the knights from the cocoon, dragging them outside. Luca, Sven, search this place to see if you find anything else of interest. I'm going outside to comfort Espen. Uh, Nico will join me as we we have uh, we'll have Matthias covered by a blanket outside, and then the uh, the three dead knights um, kind of lined up on the ground a little ways away, so we can take a better look at them in the in the daylight trying to see any marks of heraldry on their their armor. You identified that their armor is obviously a... Uh, you are not exactly certain. It seems to be old, but at the same time, it is combined with pieces of more recent protection gear. But there is a small symbol written on one of the, of the armor. It seems to be drawn in blood, the symbol of an eye with a claw. Hmm. Drawn in blood. Perhaps whoever killed these knights put this on them? Or were they corrupted themselves? Again, the same symbol. It's beginning to haunt us. Follows yeah. us everywhere. Hmm. The skeletons. I look at them, having them uh, laying on the ground. I just kind of eye up the general size of these men. Roughly six foot each. Suddenly you larger? notice that the scrolls also smell of seafood. Ah, this is an ill sign. Hmm. Well, at this point, what do we have to lose? I begin to start to peruse over the scrolls and opening them. They are pure madness, nonsensical. So many words that seem to be meaningless, but at the same time, you find that symbol over and over again throughout both of the scrolls. But what you can piece together is that one of these knights apparently was called Renki. And Renki was the rightful ruler of Brickshire. But his family was killed by the family of Uther, by the Huntleys. And he made a pact with some strange deity. It seems to be Dagon, according to these scrolls. And he managed to summon this huge spider. But something went wrong with the ritual. The summoning was not as effective. The spider had a lifespan, a limited lifespan but they were raising its children. But it seems that the spider's children were hungry for them as well. I placed my hand on Esmond's shoulder to comfort him and at the same time, take a moment to mentally send him the information I have acquired. Mm. Brookshire. This whole thing was launched by Brookshire. Well, perhaps the pieces are starting to fall together, Killian. Your hirelings, your hirelings yell from inside of the structure. They are telling you to come inside quick. A Russian side. Yes. Mid sentence. Sprint in behind Esben. They have managed to uncover a secret, a hidden passageway. A set of steps leading underground lie in a corner of the structure. I was afraid of that. 
Mm, underground. Oh, we knew it was going to eventually come to this. Well, before we head down, uh, let's take a moment. We can bury Matthias. I don't want some beast carrying him away. Oh, of course. We'll take a an hour or two to to dig a suitable grave for uh, for Matthias. I'll distribute his uh, his belongings between Nico and myself. Uh, the first time that Espen's actually carried a bag. Espen, should we go and form Vivian and her ranger friend of our intentions before we descend into the unknown for possibly the last time? Well, I think that the fact that we sent off that letter that you drafted, Jarlsberg will, will learn of what's going on here. Something tells me that time is of the essence. After Matthias buried, we'll uh, enter into the spire once more to the secret, um, the secret door. And uh, I will examine the secret door looking for a keyhole for a diamond shaped key. This passageway is completely open with stone steps leading downwards. Ah. Relight the torch that I had earlier. And descend down into the darkness. Sven, Luca, that's enough prayer for now. Come. I will follow Esben closely as he has the torch, my crossbow in hand, gliding my hand across the stonework as we descend. You descend quite deeply into the earth, perhaps 70 feet below, it seems endless. You reach the bottom and you find yourselves in a large tunnel, large enough for two horses to fit through it with riders. Your hirelings start to ask where to go they seem to be disoriented in some way, but both Esben and Killian can see some strange lights going in a particular direction forward. Mm -hmm. Something's guiding us forward. Sven, Nico. Luca, stay close. Yeah. Stay close with us. Oh, yeah, I'll describe what I'm seeing to Nico. I see something. The lights are guiding us, it would seem. And Hopefully. you hear inside of your minds, it seems there is this message telling you, come and join us. Mm. The evil is beckoning us, Killian. But my anger is white hot. There's only one way them. to free this. I'm going to join him with the pointy end first is what I'm going to join him with. You'll get your vengeance, Esmond. I'll promise you that. That I will. I unsheathe my sword and flick it, making the blade sing. So I move towards this beckoning. I march forward, my shoulder to Esmond's. I'm there and you venture, you, you venture into the darkness. And this concludes this part. We are out of character. Well, that was pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was cool. I liked it. What do you think about the entire part? The entire session? I like there's... how there's lots of threads to pull on. So I think that's good. Lots of different things to do. I like that we had to choose between Old Compton or the Barge. And I like that uh, that we weren't able to do both. I thought that was cool. Mm -hmm. You had to do one, you couldn't do both. So. That's the most challenging thing for me about this uh, campaign because I have to keep track of the timed events. That if they go this play to this place, then the this thing is going to happen, or this other thing is not going to happen. They miss this event, they encounter this event. So that was mm -hmm. at, at the same time it was fun. Well, that yeah, makes it feel so the world's alive. You know that that's huge. Absolutely keeps me drawn in and there's just so much to unpack it's going to take a while 
was a lot of information in this session. Oh, tons. I've got like a whole page full of notes. Um, so yeah, there's lots, there's, there's a ton. So. Do you think you, you are doing good with the, in solving this? Hmm. Oh, I think we're getting, I, I think we're getting a little closer to it. I, I think like Josh, you'd say that like, we're learning, we're learning that, uh, some of the things that we thought were enemies weren't maybe enemies like the, and then we're also sure. getting this kind of this latest information, which was that, uh, kind of a feud between Uth, uh, Uther and Ranky, and that this maybe is what precipitated this that's going on. So like you, you wonder, like, I'm just wondering, well, is the steward then and, and brother Amon and others have been corrupted. Um, but are they corrupted because Brickshire is kind of behind this? And then they had that, they had a delegation there. So it looks like they're, and then, then I'm still kind of wondering about where this grand Duke versus Baron versus Duke thing comes into it. Like who's so. Yeah. Yeah. My trust has definitely been stretched and snapped. Mm -hmm. We can't trust anyone in this land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It seems that way. Yeah. I was actually wondering, I, I was thinking, are they going to drink that water or are they going to? <laughs> yeah, I had forgotten about it. And then when you when you brought it up, you're like, drink it at midnight. And then, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, we should drink it at midnight. And then right yeah. after, I'm like, wait, we were warned not to drink this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I thought, would, will they remember that one? Uh, <laughs> I, I remembered it right after. Like, oh, no, this is terrible. Well, oh, we, wow. had, we had to ingest it so we can unearth some of these secrets well it, absolutely so, it, it was one of those things yes. like it was a it's a bitter pill to swallow but at the same time now we can we we're in the enemy's council so to speak yes. we can we're we're, we're kind of getting the the uh the message of you know come join us and we can see in the dark and we can understand the murals a little better and so you know maybe it was a trade-off it um, changes th things dramatically because uh, my other group didn't drink it but um, they had to go through other routes that are mm -hmm. not accessible. Uh, well, they, they aren't uh, private to the knowledge that you have because you drank that. But at the same right. time, they take other avenues. Yeah. Interesting. Oh. Yeah, I was because I, I was starting to think, like, really, if we're on a scout mission or like, we've got enough information now that we should just return to Jarlsberg and be like, this is what's going on over there. Like, this is major. You better mobilize the army. Like, this is a big deal. Um, but now of course we're kind of, we're kind of stuck. So that's okay. So too. Uh, hope that letter gets out. Yeah, me too. Oh boy. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot actually in that letter. There was lots and lots of information on that. Um, who's sky, for example, like this is a letter from, uh, from Lorien or Lothian, so Lothian. Lothian, but it was addressed to sky. And it sounded like it was someone that was close to him, You're regretting what he's done, his masters. I'm thinking Brickshire might be behind it. Canesmore. Canesmore, sorry. Ah, right. Yeah, Canesmore. Um, it kind of fit, maybe. So, Canesmore, that's right, not Brickshire. Brickshire is where we are. Canesmore is the other, the other, the rival to Jarlsberg. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think we're getting closer to figuring it out. We're probably chasing all sorts of red herrings, but that's okay. It's still fun. I think considering, I feel like we're doing pretty good overall. Oh, I think but so. Yeah, a couple of amateurs, we're doing okay. Yeah, yeah I think we're doing all right. <laughs> I can tell you that you have taken great risks for great rewards. That is, you have mm, skipped across several events that perhaps were a distraction or dangers that shouldn't be overcome but at the same time you, you can see the the risks it's all tied to great danger but you have really be lined towards the more important points as you can see mm -hmm. well uh, thanks to everyone at, at home for watching this actual play we're going to continue in two weeks as always um, if you have any comments or questions please let us know and if you want to support the channel the information on how to do that will be in the description below and remember, it is better to roleplay and fail in character than not to roleplay and fail as a player. 
Once again, thank you, and I am going to stop the recording right now.